Oh, welcome back to this morning. Now, earlier we asked if you had a question for Dr. Scott, yes. and you did. Scott is here now. Loads to get through, Scott. So Let's go great. straight to the call, shall we? Let's go to Karen on line one. Morning, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Morning to you all. Hello, oh, love. morning. What's your question for Dr. Scott? Uh, my cat has been diagnosed with coronavirus of her eyes, um, and she's now blind due to that. Oh, I'm and sorry I just to hear wondered that. if. Um, it could spread anywhere else, the coronavirus. So the coronavirus you're probably talking about is cat flu, um, and that can have impacts upon the eyes, um, as well as clearly the respiratory tract. Uh, and it is something that, uh, in, in this case, is really quite extreme. Normally, we see conjunctivitis, we don't, which is inflammation of the, uh, the tissues around the outside of the mm -hmm. eye. Um, generally, we don't see impacts to the centre of the eye. Um, do we have, a, do we have a, a picture? There we go. So there's your cat before, I understand. And then there's after. Now, you can see that left eye, so right of screen, yeah, the left eye. Yeah, you can really eye. see that. You can see that that's changed colour. Um, there, so it's gone very dark. Um, and so I can understand initially, I also appreciate that they thought it was a detached, a detached retina, um, which can sometimes lead to bleeding in the back of the eye and, and sudden eye um, vision loss. Um, I wonder, is your cat currently on antivirals or anything like that to try and stem the tide? No, she's on antibiotics and anti-inflammatories because she was sneezing the other day, but she's not on anything else. OK, all right. Well, I think probably as you're in the hands of a specialist, go back and ask them, should you be using antivirals? Because it is quite a nuanced case. Um, as I said, it's not very often that cat flu will lead to blindness in the eye, more just inflammation of the eye. Um, I would go back to them and say, are antivirals indicated in this case? Because it, it is quite a specialist one. Uh, I would be hopeful that it will only impact on one eye. And certainly the reason I say that is simply because cat flu, we normally only see it in one eye, not in both for whatever reason. So I'd be hopeful that would be the case. And, and how, how's Smokey doing now? She's OK. She, she can uh, orient her orientate her way around the house. She knows where everything is, her food and her yeah. trays and everything. Yeah. Um, we haven't moved any furniture, um, but she's just a bit subdued in herself. Aww. Yeah, so yeah, so no, no moving house, no <laughs> moving furniture. How old is she, Karen? She's only two and a half. OK, oh, so she's a young her. cat. Yeah. But Karen, I've I've had a blind I've got a blind cat. My, yes. my cat's blind pretty much since birth, yeah. and it's incredible what they can do, and they can still have a great life, uh, full of like enrichment, can't they? So Absolutely. it's all about kind of giving them a lot of stuff to yeah. play with, and different smells and 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 sounds and so Was forth. Was your cat always blind? We th we don't know, but we it's certainly blind since we we got her like a, a couple of few months, maybe three months or something like that, and we and. Dee noticed it pretty much straight away. And do they get more confident as they know the house more? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Toto's super confident and she maps the room and wants to get up yeah. on. And they've got an amazing sense of smell. So, so often they're navigating uh, environments mm. based on smell alone. So, you know, cats are incredible creatures. Um, and I'd be hopeful that, that Sapphire will continue on to live a long and healthy life, even if the vision's a little impaired. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thanks for calling. We asked the mice, we got them. Yes. Maria in Kent. Uh, you've sort of got, quote unquote, <laughs> a pet local field mouse, right? That's right. Hi, Grace. Hey, Hi, Maria. Maria. <laughs> Next to this mouse thing, Maria. Come like, on, really, Maria. Talk just, to us. Pay dirt. OK, I'm, I'm good, thank you. I love watching you guys every day. Anyway, I'll oh. be short and simple. Um, OK, basically, I like to feed the wildlife. Um, I have two dogs. They're kept away at night, obviously, when I put <laughs> food out for the foxes. Um, anyway, uh, I've got, we call him Mickey, Mickey the Mouse. There he is. <laughs> he's been oh, living, I uh, know, honestly, um, he's been living under our um, storage box for about a year and a half now. Yeah. And he often pops out, you know, and searches for like a bit of bread, food or whatever, you know, bird food, whatever I put out. But the other day I just caught him. And I put the fox's food out, eggs, ham sandwiches, um, chicken wings, etc. Wow. Um, 
you know. I want to be a mouse uh, at your house. It sounds fantastic. I know, you know, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> anyway, and I was just sitting here because I love sitting here in the dark just watching the foxes come up. And no, it wasn't the fox first. It was little Mickey the mouse. <laughs> oh. his head around. Honestly, he just come up and his it, it's, it's little stance. He's like, I'm looking around. Is it safe yet? I'm going to nibble so at the giant sandwich. Yeah. Well, Maria, <laughs> what I would say is I can see you've got a bit of carbs in there and some protein, so fantastic. Um, yeah. You could round it off with a little bit of fruit, I would say. So some berries, um, j just fruit itself, um, but grain and nuts as well, um, just to, to add to the mix. Because the fox won't want to eat that stuff, but the uh, the lovely mouse will. She could... will, will the mouse... Well, that's what I was thinking. I was like trying to think of something that I can put in a separate, you know, where little Mickey yeah. the mouse lives that he will eat yeah. and enjoy instead of worrying about the foxes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just a little bit of fruit. The fruit, the fruit and nuts, so I think, will be a lovely, a lovely thing to offer so uh, Mickey you, the mouse. So you don't think she should do a Delia and fry off that um, jam sandwich? <laughs> no. <laughs> I uh, don't think so. Yeah, and also, I'm a little bit worried about the fact that the fox and the mouse are sharing food. I just hope that mouse doesn't become food. So I probably yeah, would give it some yeah. food on its own. Would yeah, you? fair, that's fair. Can the <laughs> mouse eat all that stuff, to, uh, Scotty? Yeah, or? so, I mean, uh, what I can see there is eggs and I can see some bread. So I suppose all that's fine. But I probably would just bolster it out with something a little bit more healthy for your mouse. All right. Lovely. Thank Cheers, you very Maria. much. Love Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. No worries. Take care. Bye. 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 She was great, wasn't she? Oh, my favourite name, Maria. It's lovely name. Uh, Sue. Good morning, Sue. Hi, Sue. Friend. Our second favourite name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was my mum's name. That's why it's my name. Hi, Sue. Too. How are you doing? You've oh, got yeah. a rag doll. So don't worry about them. They're crazy. <laughs> uh, you've got a rag doll that's got uh, some sore eyes as well. Is that right? Yeah. Um, she's 13 mm. years old. Yeah. And since late last year, she started sneezing quite constantly. Oh. Unfortunately, she's had a couple of nosebleeds, but she's yeah. got a constant... Um, she's beautiful. ...blocked nose. Yeah. And I, when I heard you earlier talking about an extended tummy and gurgling, we've noticed that as well. I see. Oh, no. Yeah. She's well, quite, She's quite alert still. She still yeah. likes to play of an evening and everything. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. had antibiotics and steroid injections to cl try and clear this up, um, but nothing seems to work. I did right. ask if she had COVID, but was told that don't get COVID. <laughs> yeah, get, well, I mean, they, they actually they do, um, but um, they uh, they get they're sort of an end stage host. The main virus that we see in cats is uh, in a coronavirus grouping um, is cat flu and cat flu will present as as we said before is ocular discharge and nasal discharge and they can sneeze quite a bit as well and actually you have also got a Persian cat there uh, and uh, all oriental breeds are quite prone to um, uh, flu viruses but particularly coronavirus it seems. Uh, in this case I would suggest that it may well be that your cat has a blocked tear duct because of the consistent discharge, and that, that means that there's a problem with the nose as well. It's kind of like, you know when you cry, well, it, and your nose runs, right, because that's all connected through your nasolacrimal duct. So what I would suggest is maybe looking at trying to get that, uh, that flushed, and that may actually help to improve the problem. Uh, but that, that's a, that's a characterful-looking cat you've got right there. I mean... <laughs> gorgeous cat. Amazing. Absolute gorgeous. He's beautiful. Yeah, I can I love tell. Looking he looks cat. very well loved. <laughs> very well loved. Good. Thank yeah. you for your advice oh, today. Lovely, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for calling in. in. Uh, let's speak to Willow in Devon, who's got an issue with some rebellious rats. Oh. Hi, Willow. Hi. Hey, hey Willow. Willow. Hi. Tell us about your rats, Willow. So I got them a little while ago, and I love them to pieces. The picture I sent in, it doesn't really do them justice. But the <laughs> white they're like little Louis. dogs, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And Louis, he, after a while, he started to get a little red irritation. And those, the boy, they love play fighting all the time. So I just thought it was like gonna go away after a day or two. But it keeps coming back, and then it fades and keeps coming back. And then yesterday, I realised that it looks quite red again, and I just weren't sure what to do really. Have you changed any of the, the bedding or any of the material that the, the rat's surrounded with? Because, again, uh, allergic um, reactions to the eye are quite common in all mammals, uh, including rats. Yeah, no, I've um, kept with, like, the newspapers and the bedding. That, the other one's absolutely fine with it. And I've stopped giving them carrots because it gives them the runs. <laughs> right. But, uh, but, no, nothing They're like very that. Very good it's eyesight. Just, yeah. 
Well, what I would suggest is, um, in this case, that does look like uh, conjunctivitis, so inflammation of the support structures around the eye. Oh. So um, it sometimes will require antibiotics and anti-inflammatories before it will go away. You can try warm, salty water to mimic tears and clean it sort of three or four times a day. But if you're finding that it's consistent, then do go and see, seek veterinary treatment for the medication because it can then impact on the eye and on the vision if you leave it un untreated. Oh, thank you, because I was so worried about it being conjunctivitis. Oh, yeah, Thanks, I Willow. I, I love a rat owner as well. You're so quirky. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. A lot, I find that a lot of rat owners as well. The woman I bought them off, she was very like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, it. Willow. Thanks, Willow. Just a little last email from Emma. Uh, yeah. 18 year old, 18 week old puppy keeps wetting herself. What can I do? Well, Spring a lot of. Spaniel. Yeah, I think it's because of excitability. Uh, and a lot of young dogs get excitable when people uh, meet them. So I would say try and just reduce the excitation um, when they're meeting people. So actually ask them to ignore the dog. That's a really oh, okay. key thing. Uh, uh, but if it continues long term, there are a number of congenital conditions that can impact upon dogs, which can mean that they are um, a little bit weak of bladder. Uh, so definitely speak to your vet. And possibly also get a urine sample and bring that in with you. And we can test that as well to see if there's any infections. OK, nice. Um, Normally it's behavioural. They just get a bit excited and they have a little tinkle. As always, Scott. So clever. Great stuff, mate. I Thank try. You. I try. You really are. You know what you're doing. That's well as ego. What are you doing? <laughs> Thanks, Scott. He's still to come.